Welcome Kerbal Arts to Kerbal Space Program version 1.0.4 Now I'm just going to take a quick look, someone asked me to have a quick look and see what they've changed Okay, let me get the web page up as well, which shows me all the changes And let's go and start the game Now obviously I had a pre-look at it to see what exactly has changed Well, what have they changed? They've done a lot of bug fixes now, I mean they've squashed a lot they even then created a new bug where they had to go and do another tweak to it. So they brought out 1.0.3 and then 1.0.4, which is this one. Anyway, now they've got it right. And I have to mention that when I first loaded it up, I thought they'd done a mistake. All the grass around the Kerbal Space Center was green. And I mean dark green like the hills over there. And when I wanted to go and show you guys, it was fine. Nothing was wrong, he said. Yeah, what do you want about? <laughs> so it's messed me about. Okay, so what have they changed? They've changed a lot with heating. Now I think it's because of rebalancing. Version one was the new version out. They've only just added heating, aerodynamics. So they've done a lot of changes to that. They've also done some changes to things like parachutes. It, now, if you right-click on the part, it'll tell you if it's safe to deploy or not safe. And they've balanced a lot of parts, like the Poodle engine. They've given it a lower ISP, I think it's lower anyway, at sea level. Anyway, I think you want to get to the main parts, and that is the parts they've added. They've added... Wait for it, wait for it, let me load it up first. Done a quick space uh, test craft. Radiators! Now you have different versions, you have the static radiators. Which just give you, they're just bolted on a side or a probe or a spacecraft to radiate heat. And, well you don't need to deploy them. Then you've got three deployable ones. So let's go launch it and deploy them, so you can have a look at them. Okay, so I've got this mod installed. Hyper edit, and you can bring up your orbit, select the spacecraft you want to orbit, uh, change your orbit, in. let's put it to 100 kilometer orbit, apply, and here we are in orbit, just like magic. Okay, let's have a look at these radiators. Number one, you have the small ones, like the small solar panels, they'll dissipate, dissipate the heat of small spacecraft. Number two, I suppose you could use these on space stations, smaller ones. But what if you were thinking big? Or if you want to do a big complex, like on the moon, on the man, or whatever else, you have the large dissipators. And for comparison of size, let's extend the Gigantor solar panels. And these radiators are absolutely huge. I'm assuming that heating is going to be a big problem. Now let's give it a test and see how much of a problem it is. So, get, bring up MISC tools in hyper edit. No, don't want to destroy your vessel. Enable heat editor. And if you right click on the part now, it gives you heat editor. So bring up the fuel tank. Let's also bring up the radiator part so we can keep an eye on what happens. Ah, uh, why not, yeah. We'll bring up the other parts as well. Ooh, heat editor. Okay, let's increase the heat of the fuel tank. And you see, you've got that box there. They've they fixed the bug when you have these boxes open, so you can you so you don't have to disable the temperature gauges, and you are having memory bugs. In fact, let's have a look. Uh, wrong one. Performance. There was a memory leak where the memory allocated would increase and increase and continue to increase it until the game would crash. It looks like they've definitely fixed that. The performance is quite good. So that's one major bug fixed. Okay, you can see I've increased the radiator, the radiation of the fuel tank. The command pod is not increasing so much. Let's fast forward time a bit to see how they react with time. 
Okay, the radiators have now decreasing. So yes, it does seem to help the parts. Let's go in a faster mode. Now I launched a fuel tank in one of my tutorials of building a space station as a sort of fueling tank and still it has a heat problem. The heat that it got from the Separatrons or a rocket still on it. But it looks like the heat radiation is definitely decreasing in this. Only the solar panels seem to be having a bit of a problem. But they are decreasing over time. So yes, this would have been fine. See, like some of the heating has disappeared, except for the solar panels now. That would have been handy for me and my fuel tank. Anyway, now we've got the radiators, I suppose I could build something, dock it up with one of the docking panels with just the radiators, and the heating problem is gone. But also, they've adjusted the re-entry heating. Now I want to bring up map here. Let's activate that engine and go for re-entry. And here we go. Whoa. Let's decouple that first. Now, what they've done is they've increased the temperature or the what will happen with the re-entry heating, and they've also buffed up parts like space plane parts the heating of the space plane parts they're a bit more resilient as well as the ablator of the heat shield now i haven't got the lamp and the ambient light enhancement mod which would enable us to see the spacecraft much more easily so let's quickly warp and they still haven't fixed that when you go with four times accelerate the spacecraft will wobble while you're time accelerating so it's uh, another thing they'll have to look at now right, let's get down now you see the heating that i've done on the space station on the oh, space on the fuel tank has reduced our ablator so it'll be good to see if this will stand up now to the new re-entry heating settings There goes the rest of the spacecraft. Okay. Now we're coming out of... There, we're in hypersonic. Right click on this parachute, it's telling you it's unsafe. So as soon as that says safe, we can deploy the chute. And I think they've altered the speed. They've increased the speed where you safely deploy these chutes as well. The moment where we're unsafe, risky, and safe. So deploy chute. And there's Minmus in the background, if you can see him in the video. Okay, let's bring him down. They've also increased the time it takes for the parachute to deploy at 500 meters from the terrain. So you don't get so much of a G-shock. Spacecraft won't go to bits and you have the mod that your Kerbals will experience G-forces and die if the G-forces are too high. Then you have more chance of surviving. Okay. Let's have a look at what else they've improved. Where the hell is that over there? Oh yeah, I've got terrain scatter on. So let's get this down on the ground. Cover vessel and see what else they change. Okay, they've changed a typo in the docking tutorial. Hey <laughs> hey, they've changed a typo. Go on convection mini minimum area typo corrected. And 
so much it, except they have changed the model of the Mark 1 inline cockpit. So let's have a quick look at that. Okay, I know there's a spacecraft here. This area, I think, looks like a Mark 1 cockpit. It does look a bit. Yeah, it looks a bit better. It looks quite good. I think that's a large window. Didn't have a split window before. Yeah, it looks more aerodynamic, I'd assume. Let's take it out for a spin. Now, I think they've done things like they've found out that the speed, the vertical speed, or the horizontal speed, was reading wrong, so they've adjusted that. I didn't want to do that. Let's get in sunlight. Okay, and go to IVA mode. Hmm. I assume it's been improved. I'm only guessing. I don't use space planes that much, so... Okay, let's say it's improved then. Unanimously voted that it's improved. Uh, let's go and launch this sucker, shall we? Oh yes. I haven't seen these flame effects before. We're not gonna survive, and this is why I do not fly space planes. <laughs> so yes, there are not much changes, and other than the radiation shields, the heat shields, I think we're gonna expect not much more from this update. At least for my tastes, because <laughs> I'm not into space planes. However, I do, I do want to make a space shuttle. And perhaps I'll do a live update, a live video for that, like I did on here. Yes, this was all done live, it's no post-commentary. So anyway, that's all I can think of to include in the changers. There's not much else if I have a look at the notes now. Do -do 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 -do. There's a lot included in this. Fixed potential exploits in Science Lab. I haven't used that before, so... Ah yes, they've added heating on shields. I'm um, sorry, they've added heating element to the skin of the spacecraft as well as internal heating of the part. Now the convection between the part and the radiators you're going to attach or other parts is conducted through the skin of the part. So I'm not sure how that's going to change. That will have to be found out during time. Of testing with the parts. Okay, heat shield thermal mass modifier increased to 0 0.05 to deal with increased heating. Assume for re entry effects, re entry heating increased. And they've just fixed a lot of things. Okay, that is all that's going to be included in this simple update thing. Uh, not sure what else I can do. I haven't. This is off the cuff where I just had a quick look and glanced at the notes. So, yes, like if you want to like. Tell me this was absolutely crap because I'm not entirely sure at the moment. Until that's uploaded, and trust me, I'm an engineer. <laughs>